नमस्कार दिस इज डॉक्टर हेमा दिवाकर अ सीनियर कंसल्टेंट ऑब्सिटेशन एंड गायनोकोलॉजिस्ट फ्रॉम द सिटी ऑफ बेंगलुरु इन इंडिया आई हैव बीन द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द नेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉक्सी इन द ईयर 2013 एंड प्रेजेंटली आई होल्ड द पोस्ट ऑफ चेयरिंग द वेल वुमेन हेल्थ केयर कमेटी ऑफ आवर इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फीगो वेल टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस अ ग्लोबल इश्यू ऑफ एनीमिया it was not so long ago that a young 13 year old was spot to my consulting with the mother who was very very anxious about the fact that she has started menstruating about a year and a half ago and she has very heavy bleeding and she is very tired to cope with the routine activities in school in fact the sports activities have already come to a standing halt and she often times feels giddy the blackouts she is unable to focus on her studies and all of this is adding to a suboptimal performance in her school and her extracurricular activities as well this is not the story of just one adolescent in this age group being bought by a mother who is panic stricken but this is a global problem and in our own country india more than 55% of the girls and women made be any age group this was an instance of an adolescent girl but when she embarks couple of years later into her reproductive age in her journey through the ages right beyond the menopause anemia seems to be an underrunning common factor why this is happening what is it that makes the girls and women so vulnerable to this situation called anemia needless to say low hemoglobin less oxygen carrying capacity that defines anemia this is something that most of the lay people do not know because they have never ever tested their hemoglobin they have never ever assessed why the uh, tiredness and general loss of health feeling ill not being able to cope with the routine activities and multiple infections which come because of the lack of strength to fight these infections all this is very very common but the reason why girls and women are more prone to it is obviously because of one major factor of the blood loss at the beginning of menarche and through their menstrual cycles which are heavy often times and the root cause of this after a few months or a few years well that may be under control but the other side of the coin which accompanies heavy menstrual bleeding that is the anemia significantly of the iron deficiency anemia is often times ignored so we urge all the clinicians and practitioners to pay attention to this fact and make your practice anemia free whilst menorrhagia or excess blood loss during the menstrual cycles may be a cause there may be other regions in the body which also are in a situation of chronic blood loss which needs to be tackled in their own merit there may be worm infestations there may be a chronic intestinal inflammation which does not allow the iron to get absorbed the iron in your diet the iron as far as the supplements go you may be taking it but it's not getting absorbed well enough in some areas in india malaria is an infection which is endemic and those are highly highly prone to a situation of anemia having said this multiple causes inclusive of the sanitation hygiene the fluorosis in water etc it is shrouded with multifactorial causes as we may say and the new program which the government has come has two important initiatives one is to look at it as a life course approach a newborn a toddler an adolescent a girl in the reproductive and menopause right across womb to tomb this needs to be paid attention to and the 6 by 6 by 6 strategy which is the life course approach and also very strategically treating not only the iron deficiency anemia but also taking care by giving them the deworming tablets and also advising them about the diet and hygiene factors are so very crucial besides finding out the cause and treating it so the test treat and talk is the t3 initiative as we call it 
So what kind of tests you will do? Well, this is not a rocket science because hemoglobin is the least that you would do. And if you add on the peripheral smear to it, you will know the nature of the cells. In a rare case, if it is a sickle cell anemia, you will be able to identify it. If you do a hemoglobin electrophoresis for thalassemias and the rare forms of anemia, that also comes to the picture. And there may be other genetic causes, and the causes which are nutritional beyond the iron deficiency. They can be the B12 deficiency, they can be folic acid deficiency. In a wholesome way, you need to nurture them with the proteins as well. So the testing, the primary with hemoglobin, the peripheral smear, the ferritin and the transferrin levels in the serum as well as the iron binding capacity if required. Every case does not need a whole range of tests. So just because the tests are not available, please do not delay the treatment because iron deficiency anemia runs across all age groups in all geographies. So the first attempt should be to counsel regarding the diet and also to give the iron supplements which is 60 to 100 milligram per day is what they would require. Many, many preparations are available in the market. Be sure that you deworm prior to starting the iron and be sure you counsel her, talk to her so that she recognizes the importance of being compliant and taking the iron tablets. In a mild and moderate case, this will certainly work. But if it's not working, please do follow up and shift your focus to the selection of a parenteral or an injectable iron. There are many new preparations in the market, the iron sucrose and the uh, ferric carboxymaltos. You can certainly ensure that the iron reaches her bloodstream and she is in the pink of her health. So the treatment options are also many. The government programs are evolving in a very mature way. Way back in 1970s when the National Anemia Control Program started, it has moved a long way inclusive of the weekly and folic acid supplementation for the school and the college girls which has gone a long way in shifting the needle far ahead in terms of anemia control. So basically all age groups need to be treated because the causes will be different in different age groups. We started with the story of an young girl at around 13 years of age but when she embarks into a pregnancy you must make sure that she gets adequate amount of iron and other supplements so that she's not anemic, so that the benefits will be passed on to the fetus as well. And menopause brings with it a host of problems, including the underlying anemia, which can be truly a challenging task. Once I say it is a challenging task, we urge you to take up the challenge and use that as an opportunity to do your best to see to it that you make your practice anemia free. Wishing you all the best in reaching every girl, every woman in this great country and walking your journey through Anemia Mukta Bharat. Let's make India anemia free. Namaskar.